If I could go back in time and talk to myself when I was like 14 years old and tell myself what I do as a job now, which is make videos about building gaming computers and putting them on the internet, I'd probably ask myself one specific thing. What's the fastest gaming computer you could build right now? And that's basically what I'm doing today. I'm building a computer with pretty much all of the fastest parts that I have available to me. Now, before you go running down to the comments to complain and be like, Paul, why are you showing us how to build a computer right now when we can't even buy a graphics card? Hold your horses. This build isn't for you. This build is for me. Excellent. Today's video is brought to you by the MSI Vigor GK50 Elite LL Gaming Keyboard, featuring a sleek brushed metal top plate and fingerprint resisted matte coated keycaps. Kale Blue switches combine mechanical precision with a lighter key actuation pressure, which is great for gaming, and you can use the array of hotkeys for media control or to customize the per key RGB lighting with an array of effects. The unique octagonal shaped keycaps and stable anti-slip gaming base pads complete the package, so click the sponsor link in the description for more on the Vigor GK50 Elite from MSI. So this is a personal build. It's a crazy high-end desktop gaming PC with a uh, Ryzen Threadripper 3970X, which is their 32 core Threadripper processor and an RTX 3090 Gaming X Trio from MSI. But before I run down the parts I'm building with, I gotta do a little bit of explanation because like I said, personal build for me, and I actually have two main systems that I use for mostly work stuff or what I call work stuff here, uh, which is my streaming and capture PC that's back here behind me. And then over in our computer room, I have what I would call my main system which is Riptide and Riptide is a huge system in the Corsair 1000D case which is actually two systems a free NAS in the bottom and then a Threadripper 2970X base system in the top. Now that build was just epic and massive when I first put it together and I've done a few follow-up videos on it because I've had issues with pumps failing and other issues with the water cooling system that's in there. So my plan is to build a new computer that's going to replace the main editing system that's in Riptide, re build a new streaming and capture system out here, but that's going to use the 24 core Ryzen 2970X that's currently in Riptide. Then I'm also going to have to find a new home for the NAS. So I do have a lot of work ahead of me, but what I want to do first is get a new system built that's actually going to be maybe a little bit temporary. I might take this system and sort of uh, switch it into a different case at some point soon, but I need a functional main editing system that I can use while I do all of that work on those other systems and the rebuilds because let's face it, uh, I'm not going to keep using Riptide for now because it's just too big and too cumbersome to work with when I have needed to work with it. All that said though, let's go over the rest of the parts that are here in front of me. So like I said, as epic as this build is going to be, there are some parts that are kind of more permanent and some parts that I'm using for now. And uh, the parts I'm mainly using for now are gonna be the Corsair IQ 5000 X RGB case. This is from Corsair's new case lineup. And I've actually built an IQ 4000 uh, case, which is a really nice one. The 5000 X has some cool new features, so I'll show you a few of them. But this is absolutely a case that I grabbed because I had it here and available and there was nothing else in it. And since I need a case to put the parts in, uh, it seems to sort of fit the bill since it's a larger one. Likewise, for the cooling, since you do need some pretty decent cooling for a 32 core processor like the 3970X that is already installed, I had initially set this up to be a contestant in the RIP J, RIP GN series, but I ran into some issues, so I went with an Intel solution instead. But since the system is replacing Riptide and it's supposed to be like a system that I work on and I want it to be very stable, I wasn't really intending to do a liquid cooler. That said, I am going to start off with a liquid cooler in the H115i Elite Capellix from Corsair, which comes with the mounting for a Threadripper uh, processor and it should do a perfectly adequate job and I am planning to mount the radiator up on the top of the case uh, to hopefully prevent any uh, pump malfunctions. But what I would have probably used instead is something like this, the Dark Rock Pro TR4. And I got this one uh, to use in the streaming capture system that's out here, tucked over there in the corner. And that was a build in a Be Quiet case, so I'm doing some more Be Quiet parts for that build. I'm not covering that build today, but I just wanna point out that I do have air cooling in mind, as well as a Silent Base 802. So that build's coming soon. Subscribe if you're not already. So the case might change down the line. This is going to be on the uh, platform I built for Rip tied and it's going to be next to my wife's system so I might end up doing sort of matching systems for us at some point but that's like way way down the line. In that case I probably would change the cooler out as well but I can swap those parts after the system is set up and functional so the rest of the core components will be remaining which are an Asus ROG Zenus 2 Extreme TRX40 motherboard which I've already used just a little bit uh, doing some setup with it again back when I was doing the Rip GN Rip J stuff. Just a beautiful board top end from the Asus ROG line and it's got you know like a display on it and it has maybe an M.2 drive that's already installed in here. I have to check in a second. 
But I do intend to drop a lot of storage in here. I've got a Corsair MP600, which is a PCIe Gen 4. That's a two terabyte model on there, which is already installed on the Dim.2 riser that comes with this motherboard. And I, I, might, I might remove the heat sink from this and use the one that came with this. Or I might leave it as is, I'm not sure. I'm gonna drop this Lexar one terabyte NM610 NVMe SSD in as well. This one's not quite as fast, but uh, I wanna have a uh, main operating system and, uh, and apps storage, and then I wanna have extra drives uh, that are potentially gonna be scratch disks. Then I want some longer term reliable uh, and redundant storage. So I got a WD 10 terabyte uh, WD100 e EFAX drive here, and there's actually a newer version of this that's the 101, and I ordered a second one so I can put them in RAID 1. And again, that's just so I have a big 10 terabyte redundant RAID array that uh, I can at least uh, be a little bit more confident if I'm dropping stuff onto that's important. And I'll probably keep some of the data uh, backed up over the network as well. Uh, for our graphics card, I'm going with the RTX 3090 because it's the best graphics card I currently have. And I'm sure I sound horribly spoiled saying this, but this is my only RTX 3090. And yes, this is also one of the two that I used, again, in the RIP-J, RIP-GN series. Uh, it has been reassembled with the uh, air cooler back on it since it's back up and running. And then for the power supply, I wanted to use the power supply that's already in Riptide and just keep using it because it's a Corsair AX1600i. Um, but since Riptide hasn't been disassembled yet, I'm gonna use my backup Corsair AX1600i. And then um, when I disassemble Riptide, that one will become my backup and this one will continue to be used. Because I do try to consider power usage. And so if you've got an 80 plus titanium power supply available to you, uh, you should use it because it's gonna be more efficient. Now you might've noticed I'm missing memory and I have a 128 gig kit that's installed in Riptide or was installed in Riptide. Half of that is installed in Riptide and the other half I can install and use today, but I need to figure out where it is. I think I know though. Aha, the living room gaming PC. Well, there's two of them. Aha. Here's Riptide. My, my wife's working though, so you know, I have to be quiet. Aha. So there's my memory. Uh, two of the sticks were in the living room gaming PC because the living room gaming PC was originally a CES editing PC, but it was a mini ITX PC and I needed 16 gig dims and these were the only ones I had at the time. The other two have just been sitting on my desk for way too long, so I'll try to dust these off first. Like I said, this is a 128 gig kit originally, so 64 of these gigs via four sticks is going to go in, and it's uh, and it's DDR4 3200 cast latency 16 memory. I also pulled this out, which is the Corsair N N400, uh, which is a PCIe NVMe SSD. I think this is just gonna be my cache drive. Uh, it's not like the most terribly fastest compared to some of the newer like Gen 4 stuff that's out but it is also quite dusty, so I'll need to dust that off. And I find that having like a, an add-on PCIe drive like this in one of these lower slots, it really helps kind of fill the build out and make it look like there's not just empty space there. Speaking of, I also removed this just to confirm that I have not installed any M.2 drives below that. So that means I have more expansion space. I think for now I can keep both of these mounted to the Dim.2 because that's just a riser card that uh, fits right in here. And I use these first just because they're easiest to access and they do get a little bit more airflow than the ones that are tucked under here. Although this is a big old heat sink for those. But more M.2 slots if I want to add more SSD storage in the future when I do the next phase of this build. And that pretty much rounds out all of the parts I'm working with today. So I'm going to start assembling this beast.
So at this point in the build is usually when I like to do a once over of the case. And the first thing I'm noticing about this Corsair 5000X that I've just unboxed is that it is white. It's available in black and white. And uh, the funny thing is I asked for white originally because I had a white build that I was planning. And then I thought they sent me the black one. I am not sure how I got that idea since on the box it clearly says it's the white finish with the glass panels. But that's okay. It just means I'm building in the white version today and that if you guys are thinking like, well, these parts don't match quite as well as they could. Well, I guess that's just how it's gonna be. But to be perfectly honest with you guys, I actually don't really care that much about aesthetics when it comes to a build like this. I mean, I care about aesthetics. I'd like to build a system that looks nice. But for my purposes today, and as I've described to you, I really only care about the functionality of this system, so the white version is fine with me. So just pulling off side panels, and much like the 4000D, it's got big tempered glass side panels if you're not going with the uh, airflow version. The airflow version still has the tempered glass on one side, but it's also reinforced along one edge with these captive thumb screws, so uh, I prefer that to the uh, types of tempered glass side panels that just bolt straight through the glass. Also reinforced on the other side where you can see some of these tabs that uh, fit in on the side right here. Opposite side panel also has a big tempered glass piece, but it's just right in front of the door that swings open. And then there's also a dust filter there because you can use this area over here for ventilation. The panels just sort of pop off from the side like that, swing off, and then you can remove them. And then we have a, a fair amount of tape and stuff in here that's just holding stuff in place for shipping. So we'll peel that off. And here you can see you can do like a triple fan mount here or you can mount like a 360 radiator here and use it as an intake on the side. So a similar orientation to one that the uh, 011 Dynamic from Lee and Lee kind of popularized. That said, you can see right here is a solid panel. That's this panel right here. And this entire panel is removable. So you can pop that off and that will give you access to those fans or you can leave it covered if you're not going to be using that. And that uh, makes your cable management a little bit cleaner since you do have some grommets back there for pass-throughs. Well, there's a slightly narrow gap here for certain thick cables. The front panel here is tempered glass and since this is the 5000X RGB IQ version it comes with three included RGB fans. If you go with the airflow version it comes with only two fans and they mount one in the front and one is an exhaust. Likewise though there's a solid panel version and an airflow version so if you really want a lot of airflow you should probably go with that. I think I'll be fine for airflow but if I was purely focused on performance especially in a system like this that's going to have some pretty heavy high-end hardware installed, I would probably stick with the Airflow front panel. My front I.O. setup is going to be a little bit reduced from the Corsair 1000D. Uh, I do have still the two USB 3.0 ports and I do have that key USB 3.2 Gen 2 Type-C port, so that's nice. And speaking of the 1000D, I guess it is sort of fitting that uh, as I'm building a replacement for Riptide, I'm building in a case that does have a few similar elements to the 1000D, such as this swing out door in the back, which you can remove if you want to, but uh, it does keep everything fairly clean back there. And you do still have a pretty decent gap here for cable management and stuff. There's also a bunch of accessories kind of wedged down here in the bottom. But I think I am going to have to reconfigure this because I have the 1600 watt power supply, which is pretty long. And right now they have the two drive cage mounted right here. That's another shortcoming of this case for this type of build is I've only got two spots for 3.5 inch hard drive. So I think I can shift this forward a little bit. That should hopefully give me more, more room for the power supply back here. And this extra piece in the accessories, I, I'm pretty sure is a replacement for this piece right here. So um, I'll... I'll be taking a look at that and figuring out exactly how I need to orient this to fit my 3.5 inch drives. Fortunately though, as far as cooling goes, I'm just gonna stick with the triple intake fan setup right here. I probably won't need this side intake for now so I can leave this panel on. And then my uh, AIO radiator, the 280 millimeter one, is gonna go in the top up there. It's gonna leave me with one fan mount here that I should set up a fan for exhaust with, but um, if I want it to be RGB and match these and be white, I'm not sure if I have a fan that, that matches up with that criteria. I'll find out soon. Anyway, that's enough overview for the case. Let's uh, start installing hardware. All right, I've encountered my first major setback here, which is a compatibility issue, which is probably due to the fact that I am just sort of putting this build together with parts that I have rather than having done more research into the case and what it's capable of and what I'm using. So with my 600 watt power supply here, AX1600i, which is a very lengthy power supply, you can see as I have it lined up with where it needs to mount, uh, it is going to conflict with my drive cage down here especially if the drive cage were in its original position, which is right there, which provides the maximum amount of space up front and also conveniently allows you to actually remove the hard drive trays. 
Look how it can just slide out just like that. Now, if I want to shift this, uh, there's just a couple thumb screws over here and there's catches in the bottom. So you have two other positions. One you can move right there, and one you can move right there. And here you can see I would probably have, you know, plenty of room for my power supply, even a little bit of space here for the modular cables to plug in and everything. But as mentioned, I actually do want to use this hard drive cage because I've got not one, but two anticipated 10 terabyte hard drives to drop in there. So my next thought was, well, if I have the cage right there, then maybe I can just remove this mount here since I'm not planning on installing any fans to it. If I can remove this bracket, then that would still give me access to those cages. Because in another twist of fate, I have my 10 terabyte drive right here ready to go, but I have a second one I ordered from Amazon. It was supposed to arrive yesterday, and now they're like, oh, it might arrive today or maybe tomorrow. So whereas before, I would have been like, okay, I'll just install this single drive and wire up a SATA and power cable for the second one, and when it arrives, I'll pop it in there and set up the RAID array. That becomes much more challenging when I can't actually get at the drive cages. And in order to get at the drive cages, I would need to shift this back over to get it out. And in order to do that, I would need to remove the power supply. And you can see how this all builds on itself to create a situation that's really not ideal at all for what I need to do in the next day or two. So my advice to anyone building a high-end desktop PC similar to what I'm trying to assemble today, especially if you have storage needs that require you to install multiple uh, 3.5 inch mechanical hard drives, especially if you need to install more than two, this probably is not the case to go with. And, and that's okay. Like I said, I didn't initially choose this case for this build. It was just the case that I had available that was kind of new and kind of fancy and seemed like it would work out. But what I'm gonna do is just try to go with a different power supply. I have an RM850X here that might fit in there. I need, I feel like at least 850 watts for an RTX 3090 and my 3970X setup. So let's give this one a shot and see if it fits. Yeah, it does look like the 850X will fit with the cage in the position it needs to be. Uh, there is a little bit of space here. Uh, I'm gonna have to plug in all of my modular cables first to make sure I have them all connected, the ones that I need to, because it's gonna be really hard to get to that afterwards, but I think it should be okay. All right, I've done a temporary workaround for my power supply situation. I've got the RM850 installed with as many cables connected to it as I think I will ever hopefully need for this build in its current shape and form. I had to pull this cage out in order to install this with all the cables because you got to install it from this side, not from the back. I was then able to wedge this back in. However, I can't reach the uh, thumb screws that are down at the bottom to secure it in place anymore, but that's okay. You know what? This build is becoming more and more temporary as time goes on. So I'm not sure if you guys can tell, but I've basically tossed aesthetics and cable management out the window for this build, hooray! Uh, which, which honestly isn't going to affect the performance at all. And I'm kind of reveling in just leaving a bunch of these cables out and connected. I removed that cable cover panel because it was in the way, specifically this big old piece of uh, heat shrink that's over the main 24 pin connector for the Corsair uh, 850X. If you try to push it through the grommet right there, it will strip the grommet because it's too fat and you can't really angle it back there anyway. So I just said, you know what? I'm just gonna remove that panel. I'm just going to route all of my cables through the nice open area that's been now made available by that. And at this point, I have a lot of the stuff wired up, uh, front panel connectors down here, like a USB for the uh, Corsair IQ hub that's back there. Lots of power along this side, 24 pin, dual eight pins for CPU. There's a supplemental six pin PCI Express graphics connector that you plug in there just for extra juice over for the processor. Other than that, my uh, Type-C, the uh, right angle USB 3.0 connector there, and I plugged in some SATA cables. I stuck a two terabyte crucial just SATA SSD back here because that PCIe SSD that I pulled out of Riptide was actually pretty functional. I pulled it out and Riptide stopped working, so uh, I wanted an extra SSD in here, so I've added that one. And then I've got some pre-routed SATA data cables and SATA power cables over here for my hard drives, which I will hopefully still be able to wedge in right there once the other one finally arrives from Amazon. In other news, there was a reason why this hard drive was on sale uh, for Black Friday. It is the EFAX version. The other 10 terabyte drive that's on the way is the EF. 
RX version, I believe. This one uses a type of magnetic recording for the data that is not actually the best for use in a NAS environment. And in particular, if you need to rebuild an array, it's it's really not good. So in case any of you spotted that and was like, hey, Paul, you have the uh, not good version of this drive. Don't worry, I am aware, and these will just be in RAID 1, so I think it'll be all right. I now just need to get the CPU cooler installed, and then uh, lastly would be the graphics card. And fortunately, the uh, IQ hub that's in here for the RGB, not that I'm too concerned about RGB or aesthetics, but it does have these plugs for the RGB lights on the Corsair fans, and since there's three at the front, three are already plugged in, I'll have two more for the two fans on the Corsair IQ. I was just talking about connecting up the RGBs for the fans, the fans on the AIO radiator, as well as uh, the RGB that's on this little display right here from the Corsair Elite Capellix unit. And I thought to myself, I'm gonna have the right amount of plugs, three for the front fans, two for the top fans, and one more to let me plug this guy in and get it up and running. Turns out Corsair designed these units with two cables coming off of the pump block unit. One is just this, which reports RPM, so you can plug it into a header on your motherboard and you can have your motherboard check the RPMs, which is a great way to determine if the pump ever fails, by the way. And then there's this plug, it's proprietary. Uh, so it needs to plug into something very specific. The thing I had in the box was this. This is one of Corsair's little RGB hubs. It's just got some SATA power, a USB connector, and then six connections to plug in your RGB stuff. This is actually what's pre-installed in the 5000X case. It just doesn't have the housing on it like this one does. However, and this is completely my fault, this is not what should have been put back in the box with this all-in-one liquid cooler. Right there is the piece of hardware that was included with this AIO originally, which I can't find anywhere. It's called a Commander Core. The stupid thing is I even have like this. This is a Commander Pro. This is like extra Corsair IQ hardware. And I have, I have more of these lying around. I was like, all right, if I need to take a Commander Pro out and use that instead, I will do that. However, guess what also doesn't have a plug for this proprietary connector, the Commander Pro. Guess what this connector does? It provides RGB connectivity and it also controls the power for the pump. So unless you have that extra piece of hardware that this plugs into specifically, suddenly your AIO is useless. Okay guys, I gotta do kind of a rough segue here because I'm gonna be perfectly honest, things got a little bit out of hand yesterday and I kind of lost my temper. I got a little upset because there were just lots of setbacks, lots of little things that on their own probably wouldn't have been that big of a deal, but altogether it made me go from, I'm building a nice computer that should be a fairly simple project that I should be able to get done in a day or an afternoon maybe to suddenly I'm having to swap in parts that I wasn't intending to use, working around unforeseen conflicts because I just decided to to use this case rather than doing a little bit more research on it, such as the power supply length and fitting hard drives inside. And a lot of these things were just my fault um, because, for example, like with the thing that finally broke me and made me stop working on this altogether, was when, re when I realized that the H H115i Elite Capellix here from Corsair uses a separate little controller for the RGB and the pump, and I, I lost it, and that's my fault. I misplaced it after I put everything back in the box after the previous build I did in the Corsair 4000D. My second W WD Red 10 terabyte hard drive just never arrived. I was expecting that to arrive the first day I was assembling this, and after like three days, Amazon was like, uh, you know, we just we just lost it. You get a refund now. So I've decided to throw some money at the problem. I have placed an order with Newegg for two WD Red Pro 10 terabyte drives, which are the 7200 RPM ones, which are faster as well. So I will be able to install those since I left enough space for access down in the basement area. That's one thing. And then second, uh, after I found that the H1 15 Elite Capellix wasn't going to work, I started scouring my garage for something that would, and I need Threadripper TRX40 compatibility, which isn't something that is compatible with lots of different coolers. So amongst all of my all-in-one liquid coolers and some of the air coolers I have around, I wasn't able to find something that I was like, you know what, that's a perfect fit and I can drop it in and start using it. I could probably still do an AIO because I do have the bracket that fits on there for the round Asetek type coolers, and I do have some of those. But again, for the sake of simplicity, and because again, this is supposed to be a somewhat temporary build there's a decent chance I'm gonna pull the hardware out and reconfigure it in a more appropriate case. I decided to go with what I have, and for that, I'm just gonna go with the Dark Rock Pro TR4 edition, which I showed you guys earlier in this video, and it's supposed to go in the build I'm doing in the Silent Base 802, which is going to be the stream and capture system back here. But because I wanna solve these problems and get this system put together, I'm just gonna install this one today. I ordered another one from Newegg along with those two WD 10 terabyte hard drives. The hard drives aren't getting here till next week, so I'll install those at a later date. This, I'm gonna install 
install right now. And then all I have to do is install the graphics card. And then I should be able to like install Windows and get this system running so I can decommission Riptide. But anyway, that's my quick explanation of what's been going on. I'm going to install hopefully these last two pieces of hardware very quickly. The thing that pops into my head immediately is that I hope this fits with clearance for this Corsair RAM, but uh, I've got other memory that I can install too. And I'm perfectly fine going with a four by eight gig kit or something like that. Again, just to get me by. That's enough of this interjection though. Let's get back to work. Well, at this point, I'm very happy to say that the uh, Dark Rock Pro TR4 installed without a hitch. There's even enough clearance, just barely, uh, on top of our Corsair Vengeance DDR4 memory, which is pretty tall since it's got the RGB lights and everything going on on top. And the RTX 3090 slotted in as well. I wasn't expecting any difficulties, but there was a slight concern that there might not be enough clearance with the big air cooler on there, but there's plenty of room, actually even still a good centimeter of space or so in there. I even took a little bit of time to do some cable management. I should point out this is an EATX motherboard, which this case does support, but it does kind of slightly block the uh, pass-through grommets there. That's why I decided to just remove that cable cover entirely just for ease of access and routing stuff. And with everything tied up, it doesn't look horrible. And it goes along with the theme of this build or what the theme of this build has become which is uh, just make it work. To that end, I have put no side panels back on or anything before I can do uh, a little test startup here. RGB lights with standby power is good. And powering it on, looks like we have uh, our fans in the front spinning, even the RGB connectivity, since I did still connect that up to the hub that comes with the case. And since the Zenith 2 Extreme motherboard has this really nice display panel right here, we can immediately see stuff like, oh, the CPU temperature is only about 32, 34 degrees, so that's pretty good. We have even booted into Windows, because apparently one of those SSDs I installed had Windows installed on it, which I totally forgot. I'm gonna do a clean install in a minute. But here's our configuration for now. We have three intake fans providing us with some positive pressure. I didn't install any fans in the top or the back. And you know what, I'm okay with that. I think it's gonna get enough airflow as is. And like I said, temporary build will be expanded on and improved in the future. And maybe that's something you guys can leave me some comments down in the comment section about things I can add on to this system since it is uh, supposed to be a pretty beastly editing rig. And although I'm happy that everything is fitting inside this case, especially again with the very tall air cooler here, which does have enough clearance, I do think that once I do some of the other transitional things, such as uh, getting the streaming capture system swapped over, I would like to transfer a lot of the core components from this into a different case, maybe upgrade to that 80 plus titanium power supply. I can even like get another Silent Wings 140 fan to mount on the back here so I can have push, pull, push, pull. So lots that could still be done with this build, I think. But since I have confirmed that it is functional and booted up into Windows, I'm going to uh, peel all the stuff off the side panels and put them back on. So there you have it guys, the finished product, the finished build, or I would say the first incarnation of this current build, because as I've said multiple times, this is sort of a phase one. It's getting it up and running so that I can do some other transitionary stuff. The next step is gonna be uh, getting all the software set up on this and making sure it's fully functional, then decommissioning Riptide and pulling the system out of there, finding a suitable home for the NAS that's in the bottom of Riptide, and then I can go ahead with the rebuild of the streaming capture system using the internal parts from Riptide. And then lastly, I'll probably come back to this system to 
update it and upgrade it and change some stuff out. And that'll be largely based on my needs as well as your feedback. So if you guys have any suggestions for that, leave it in the comment section down below, whether it's uh, hardware suggestions for this, ways that I could add more storage. If there's a case you guys think would be more suitable for a high-end desktop build that needs a little bit more access to storage and possible 3.5 inch drive storage. Aside from that, apart from the maybe small aesthetic details here and there, like, you know, my GPU is sagging a little bit. Uh, my cable management is okay, but it's not the best. I have gratuitous RGB that's not even really that necessary. I didn't even bother to put the uh, rear panel on that blocks off all the cables because I'm gonna need to get back at that space. But like I said, I'd love to hear what you guys think. Leave me comments in the comment section down below if you're down there and you wanna hit the like button. I much appreciate that as well. And don't forget to check out my store where you can buy shirts, mugs, pint glasses, and all sorts of other nice merch, including my new beer sets with the bamboo coasters. They're pretty sweet. Thanks again for watching this video, you guys, and we'll see you in the next one.